Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is shortest path in directed acyclic graph and it is a medium level problem. So for this particular problem, I would say like uh, for now, you can just ignore this particular part directed acyclic graph. I will discuss at the end what is the significance of this particular term. For now, you can just assume that we have been given a graph which is weighted and is directed. So I will also tell you what is what do we mean by weighted and directed graph but for this specific term we will discuss it at the end and we will also discuss why this particular part is very very important right. So we just basically have to find the shortest path in a directed and weighted graph. Now there are a couple of methods to do this and the most popular ones among them is either Dijkstra or you can use Pelman Ford also any one of them is correct. And uh, in this particular problem, we have been given the edge list. So it also makes sense to use Bellman 4 directly because it makes use of the edge list. But for this video, we're going to discuss Dijkstra's algorithm. The reason being, we have been doing BFS for a while now. Recently, we had two problems the days where we had BFS and Dijkstra's is much similar to BFS rather than applying Bellman 4. Right. So we'll be understanding Dijkstra's in this particular video. And I'll also tell you at the end, what do we mean by directed acyclic graph and what is the significance of this particular term in this problem. So the problem statement is very simple that uh, we have been given a graph with n nodes or n vertices and m edges right. Now these edges obviously they are given in the form of an edge list and we have to find the distance of all the nodes from the source node and if it is not possible to reach any vertex we have to return minus 1 for that particular vertex. So this, for, this is the graph let me just take this as an example. So if I just take this one, so you see this is the graph that has been given to us. Now they say that the number of vertices is equal to 4 and the number of edges is equal to 2. So the first uh, edge is from 0 to 1. So let's say this is node 0 and this is node 1. Remember this is our directed graph, right? So we have to put an arrow like this. Now there is one more node from 0 to 2, right? So 2 is here let's say and it is 1. Now we will have to return an array or a vector. So this is the array. So this index will denote the distance of 0 from itself. This index will denote the distance of 1 from 0, the distance of 2 from 0 and then the distance of 3 from 0. Right. So we have not drawn 3 here. So let me just make it here. Right. So the shortest distance from 0 to 1 is of distance 2. Right. The shortest distance from 0 to 2 is of distance 1. We cannot reach 3 from 0, so we have to put minus 1 here and uh, since 0 is the node itself, we can put 0 here, right. So this is the array that we have to return and you see it will match the array that has been given to us in the expected output 0, 2, 1 and minus 1, right. So uh, let us discuss uh, how we can solve this particular problem, Dijkstra's algorithm and why is it the most popularly used method to find the shortest path. And remember the shortest path that we are talking here is single source single source shortest path. So what is single source shortest path? These are the kind of problems where you have one source and you have to find the distance of all the other nodes from that particular source, right? This is exactly what you want in this particular problem. Now let us recall how did we try to find the distance of all the nodes when the graph was unweighted, right? And undirected. And actually undirected doesn't even matter. The most important term here is unweighted right. So in yesterday's problem the graph was unweighted right. Here the graph is weighted but yesterday the edge weight was 1 for all the edges right. So no matter which edge we choose the weight was always 1 right. Now the difference from yesterday's problem is that this is not going to be 1 or this is not going to be constant for all the edges. This is going to be different for all the edges. Now let us assume a case. So let's say there are two nodes like this and they both are going towards the same node, right. Now let's say both of them have the same uh, weight, right. So if you are at this particular node, you can reach this particular node by moving a distance of 2. Similarly for this particular node, you can go from here to here by moving a distance of 2, right. Now let us say, now let us say that the distance of this particular node is x from the source node and the distance of this particular node is y from the source node, right. So now if I try to go from here to here, the distance will be x plus 2 
and if I try to go from here to here, the distance will be y plus 2, right. So these are the two different distances that I can have for this particular node from the source node. So for very obvious reasons, I would want to take the smaller among them, right. So let's say that x plus 2, let us just assume for now that x plus 2 is less than y plus 2, right. Now what will happen? Let's say, let's say you updated the distance with y first, right. So let's say you updated it. So this distance is currently y plus 2. Then you came from here, you realize that x plus 2 is smaller than y plus 2. That means this distance should be updated again, right. So till now it was fine. But just like yesterday, just like yesterday, if it has several other children nodes, right, like this, right. So once we update the distance of this particular node, we'll have to update the distance of all the nodes from here, right. So this was the same problem that we were facing and this is the same reason why we chose to use BFS instead of DFS in finding the shortest path. This problem is very similar to what we encountered yesterday while using BFS. But since the weights for all the edges were same, so we were able to tackle it with the help of simple BFS, right. Now in this particular scenario, you will realize that even if you do BFS, right. So let's say this is the source node and this distance is x, this distance is y, right. So both of them will be updated at the same time, right, because both of them are at level 1. But since this value is not equal for both of them, their distance will not be equal, right. So you see, just because yesterday the edges were equal, that is why we were able to apply simple BFS. But now since the edges are also different, we are not able to apply BFS because even if we do it, even if we do it, there might still be a case where we encounter this particular problem uh, where as soon as we update the weight of an edge, we'll have to update all of its children, right. So that means we cannot apply simple BFS here. So what can we do? We'll try implementing a slight modification of BFS, right. So our key idea yesterday was to update this distance with a node which is smaller, right. So I'll try to update this distance with x plus 2 first. Let's say we updated this distance and later at some point of time y also came and checked this particular distance. But since this particular node has already uh, realized that x plus 2 is, is smaller than y plus 2, it is not going to update the distance, right. So that means it is always optimal to update the node with a distance which is the smallest one among all the distances, right. So if I had some way of determining that I would always choose x first instead of y because x is smaller than y, that means in that particular case, I'll be able to update the, no, the distance of this node with x plus 2 first, right. And then later, even if it has multiple nodes, I'll not have to update them later, right. So this is the key idea behind Dijkstra's algorithm that I would always want to take this particular x first just because it has a smaller weight than y. Now how do we do it programmatically? How do I maintain this order that if x is less than y or the total distance of this node a is less than the total distance of this node b, I would always want to execute this node first. How do we do it programmatically? So in BFS, we use the queue. Because all the weights or all the nodes had the same priority, right. But here we are seeing that some nodes are more important than others and should be executed first. So we can simply use a priority queue, right, where all the nodes are sorted by some priority. So what should be that priority? The priority should be the total distance of node A if node A is occurring before before node B in the queue, then the total distance, total distance of node A should be less than the total distance of node B from the source obviously, right. So this is the criteria for my priority queue that if my node A is occurring before node B in my queue, then the total distance of node A should be less than total distance of node B, right. And the rest of the things will remain as it was in the BFS or simple BFS to find the shortest path. This is the only difference that you have that instead of maintaining a simple queue, you have to maintain a priority queue, right. Now there are a couple of things that you need to understand before using a priority queue. So priority queue internally uses heaps, right. And by default it will form a max heap, right. So the greatest element will be above all the other elements, 
but you will see if we are trying to sort the elements with the help of distance then the smallest element should occur first right so the first thing is instead of taking a max heap we'll have to take a min heap right the second thing is the elements should be sorted by their total distance from the source node right so the most important criteria is the total distance from the source node and it should be always considered first right so in the priority queue instead of just storing the node i'll also have to save its total distance from the source node so i can store a pair of total distance common node where total distance is going to denote the distance of this particular node from the source node and this node value is the index of the node itself right so i'll have to store the information in a pair like this now you might be wondering why i have taken this total distance first and this node second i could have also taken like node first and then total distance after it right so right now i am just explaining you the implementation details and you will always realize that if we choose any default sorting order for example if you have a vector of pairs vector of pairs let's say right now if you apply the sort function on it you will realize that the that the vector will always be sorted first in accordance to the first element that is the first part of the pair then the second part of the pair so for example if we have two elements like this 2 comma 3 and 1 comma 3 this pair will always occur before this particular pair why because this one value is smaller than the second value now if the first value is same in both of them then the second value will be considered so we want to sort the priority queue with the help of this total distance that is why we are taking it as the first part of the pair right because if we choose any default sorting order this first part will be considered as a higher priority part so the first thing was in implementation details that by default priority queue is max heap we want to convert it into min heap and we need to make sure that if you are storing pairs the total distance should be the first part of the pair the third important thing for the implementation detail is that we have been given an edge list in the problem right so to perform bfs we will need to convert this edge list into a proper graph then only we can perform a bfs or this dxr as algorithm so that was all about the explanation now let us quickly have a look at the code and you will be able to understand it in a much better way so you see first of all i created a distance vector where all the values are initialized with 10 to the power 9 and the distance of the zeroth node is 0 right now i have created a graph so this graph is denoted by g so it is nothing but just a vector of vector which is storing pairs of integers right so it is a double dimensional vector containing pairs of integers why pairs of integers because one part is going to store the node and the second part is going to store the distance right so i'm just traversing through the edge list and for the first part that is edges of i0 denoting the first node i'm just pushing back so this is in place back similar to push back it's just that it helps us to directly push objects instead of like uh, uh pushing a single element so if i use in place back here i don't have to use make pair with these two and if i use push back here i'll have to use make pair here right so that is something that you need to take care of now edges of i1 is go to is going to denote the second node of this particular edge and edges of i2 is going to denote the weight so i am creating a priority queue of pair of integers comma integers now this is something that you will need to just know there is a uh, like no specific reason for it this is just the syntax of how you would uh, define that it is a inverted or a min heap right so whenever for example if you are using pair of integers as integers you will have to pass a vector of the same data type right so i am passing a vector of pairs of integers comma integers similarly i will have to use this function greater which is which will actually help me to invert the elements right and i am passing the data type integers comma integers so if you are just forming a priority queue of integers then it could have been written like this let me just write it also for you so i'm writing it in a comment that it will be written like priority queue then i can pass an integers then a vector of integers and then greater greater of integers right this is how you would do if you just want to form with integers but since i want pair of integers that is why i am using pair of integers everywhere instead of simple integers right so i am just telling you how to write it the format or the syntax first you write the data type then you pass a vector of that particular data type and then you pass a greater function with that data type right so this is how you do it now you have to push the source node into your priority queue so the total distance will be zero and the node is zero itself right now while pq is not empty or the priority queue is not empty what i'll do i'll make two variables current distance and node and i'll store them from the top of the priority queue and i pop it from the priority queue. 
Now I'm just going to check what is the next element in my graph of node. That means the adjacency list of the current node. For each next element, I'll have two types of information. One is the weight and one is the child. So I'm just going to store this next variable in this child and weight variables. Now, if the distance of child is greater than the distance of node plus the weight, then I'm just going to update the distance of the child and I'm going to push this child into my priority key. So you see, I'm taking the distance of the child first and then the child itself, right? Now at the end, what I can do, I can just run a simple for loop and for all the values that still has a distance of tennis power nine, that means I was not able to reach them and I can set the distance of that particular node to minus one. At the end, I can just return this D vector and this should be my final answer. So let me just quickly submit this code and show you that this particular code works and it is absolutely correct. So you see parcel of the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. So before ending the video, I just wanted to discuss this particular thing that is directed acyclic graph and what is the significance of this. So you will see that, for example, if this is my node, right, and this is some other node, and this is nodes like this, and we form a cycle, right. Now, if this is one, this is oh, two, this is three, this is four, right. So let's say this is the source node, so its distance will be one. The distance of this particular node will be three. The distance of this particular node will be six. And you will see that this six will not be able to update the distance of this particular node. So it is not going to update, right. Now I know that this is the distance, but what if, what if one of the edge weights was negative, right. So let's say that this weight was, let's say instead of having two, here we had minus 10. So the distance of this particular node will still remain one. The distance of this particular node will become minus nine. The distance of this node will become minus six and this weight is four. This distance is minus six. So minus six plus four be equals to minus two, right? So the distance of the source node was initially zero. It was initially zero. But if I try to go from this node to this node, right, with the distance of four, its distance will become minus two, right? Which is not possible. First of all, it is not possible because it is the source node itself. But now you will see if it is minus two, then I'll have to update the distance of this node as well because minus two plus one will be equal to minus one. And then since it is minus one, I'll have to update the distance of this particular node itself. So minus one minus 10 will be equal to minus 11. So you see this way, there are two violations. First of all, the distance of the source node from itself cannot be minus two. It will always be zero. The second thing is if that ever happens, that means I'm going to get stuck in an infinite loop and this cycle will keep on repeating itself, right? So this is the problem when we have a cyclic graph, right? So if we have a cyclic graph, there are two cases, either the weights, weights should be all positive, right? Then it is also fine. There is no problem. But if the weights are negative, it cannot contain cycles, right? This is something I wanted to discuss. That is why they have given us that it should be a directed acyclic graph, right? Acyclic means that the graph doesn't contain any cycles. So that was it for today's video. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.